Hey guys, my name is Brittany. This is my review video for the kinetic molecular theory. Um, I hope this is a good review review for everybody. It was really good for me to be able to go back over my notes and make this presentation. Uh, I'm hoping it helps us all prepare a little bit more for the final because um, that's coming up. <laughs> and uh, let's go ahead and jump right into it. So the kinetic molecular theory, just for a little bit of background, that's the theory of how gas moves. Just move into movement of gas. Okay, so a little bit of background. Let's go ahead and start uh, by talking about some of the properties of a gas. Uh, so gas is what it, it's a homogeneous mixture, and a homogeneous mixture is something that looks the same throughout. So when we go step outside, uh, really, if we look, you know, to the right, we can't really tell the difference between the gas to the right of us and to the left of us. It all looks the same everywhere. Uh, that's what a homogeneous mixture means. You can't really tell the difference. You know, it, it's all mixed together. Can't can't see different parts. Um, another property is that gas is expandable and compressible to fit whatever space it is in. Um, and so, an example of this would be: uh, say you have a balloon filled with any type of gas. Uh, we'll use helium. Why not? Uh, and you go step into an empty room and you pop the balloon and all the helium escapes out of the balloon. Now, the helium gas isn't just floating around the room in the shape of a balloon. No, the gas, as we all know, it diffuses out, spreads out to fill the room. And you could easily take all, well, not easily, but if you could gather all those helium atoms and shove them back into the balloon, then they would fit inside the balloon again. And so, gas really just spreads out to fit whatever space it's given. Um, and the third property is that gas puts pressure on its surroundings. So think about the balloon again, you know, the gas inside the balloon is putting pressure outwards to keep the balloon from, you know, to keep the gas from, and the balloon from caving in on itself. Okay. Now we're gonna talk about the kinetic molecular theory. There are five principles in this theory that we learned about, and we're gonna go over all of them briefly. Um, first principle, gas has insignificant volumes compared to its container. So um, if you were in a room and you were able to hand pick all of the oxygen atoms out of the air or oxygen molecules out of the air and, and compress them all into a tiny cube that cube would be so much smaller than the actual room because like um, one of those um, properties that we talked about before, gas expands, it spreads out to fit the space that it's given. Um, and so that's why gas has an insignificant volume compared to the room it's in. Uh, the second principle is that gas is constantly moving around randomly and gas particles are always moving and they're not moving in any particular order or pattern. It's all just random. And this third principle plays into that because, because gas is always moving around randomly, gas collides with itself sometimes. And when it does, energy and momentum are conserved. So think about two ping pong balls hitting each other. They hit each other, boom, they bounce off of each other. That energy and that momentum are conserved. Um, Dr. Mortensen also used a word, he also called this elasticity. So that would be another word um, for this third principle. Uh, the fourth principle is that gas has no intermolecular interactions. So there's nothing happening between the gas particles. They aren't really like, attracted to each other or like doing anything to each other. They're just kind of minding their own business, just kind of floating out there, you know? And then the fifth principle um, is average kinetic energy of the gas is proportional to the temperature of the gas. And we're going to go ahead and talk about that a little bit more right now. So Average kinetic energy, what is it? Well, it's the average speed of all the molecules, not just the average speed, or not just the speed of like one molecule. Um, and this is important because as we look at this graph here, um, we can see that. So let's take this red line, for example. It's uh, gas at ne negative 100 degrees Celsius. So that's pretty cold. Uh, the average speed of the molecules moving at this um, temperature it's about 300 meters per second. And you can see um, a lot of molecules are going at this average. Um, the distribution is quite steep. Um, you know, it's pretty narrow. Most of the molecules fall within this range, you know, but as the gas heats up, 
I'm gonna heat it up to about 20 degrees Celsius. Here we are, the average molecular speed has increased from 300 meters per second to about 400 meters per second. But the distribution um, with the molecules has spread out as well. So it's not as narrow not as narrow of a distribution as the colder temperatures. And as we get hotter, we can even see at 600 degrees Celsius, um, the average molecular speed meters per second is about 700, but the distribution is very wide. We can see it's very spread out distribution. Um, and this is why average kinetic energy is important because if you were to look at just one molecule, say you were looking at a gas that was 600 degrees Celsius, so this blue line, and you pulled one gas molecule, molecule you, were, you were looking at one gas molecule, right? And it was moving maybe 150 meters per second. And you're like, man, that gas molecule is moving so slow. This gas must not be very hot because this one molecule is going so slow. Well, because the distribution is so wide, it gets wider the hotter you get. It's not fair to just look at one molecule because that one molecule will probably not give you an accurate picture of the entire, the gas as a whole. And um, that could go the same if you look at one molecule and it's moving super, super, super fast. And you're like, man, this gas must be so hot. Well, maybe, maybe it's not as hot as you think it is because maybe you're just looking at a super fast particle. You know, we have to look at the average um, for all of them because the distribution kind of spreads out as it gets hotter. Um, so we just hit these two points here. Uh, the higher the temperature, the more spread out the curve, and the higher the temperature, the higher the average speed, like we just talked about. And going a little bit more into speed, we're going to talk about root mean square speed. And what is root mean square speed? Well, it's kind of like taking the average of the gas particles, but it's a little bit more accurate than the average. Um, I think one of these reasons is because it takes into account velocity. Um, this is an example. I don't think we really need to know this, but this is just an idea of maybe why we use root mean square speed. Um, if we were to take two runners, they're running in opposite directions, each at 10 miles per hour. If you took the average, you would say, okay, this person's running plus, you know, 10 this way. This person's running negative 10 that way because they're going opposite directions. You know, you have to put it on a, on like a spectrum. Um, the average would end up being zero miles per hour because the tens in opposite directions as we cancel each other out. But zero miles per hour, that's not accurate um, because it's not taking into account direction. And root mean square speed is more accurate than average. I think um, one of the reasons is because of this. So when we're talking about root mean square speed, we were given two equations and we're gonna talk about both of them. First, is this equation. Um, I think it's, we're not gonna use it as much as the other one, but we're still gonna talk about it. And so this is what you'd use if you were given multiple values. You say, for example, the question was like, these five runners each have a speed of you know, 10 miles per hour, 12 miles per hour, 13 miles per hour. You would take those values, you use your value, you plug them in, square each of the values, add them all up, and then divide them by how many values you have, which, which is n. n right there, n. Um, then you take the square root of that. So take the values, square the individual values, add them together, divide them by how many values you have. Uh, that's one equation. Second equation, I think it's going to be more common. Uh, 3 RT divided by the molar mass and take the square root of that. This is what you'd use if you had uh, one value and it was like this the gas is moving at the uh, it has a, a temperature of this and a molar mass of this, what is the root mean square speed, you know, type of question. Um, and so we're going to go over each of these variables. So three, that's just the number that we use. I don't know why, it's just is there in the equation. Um, R, I know we have a bunch of different R values on our equation sheet. I think there's three, but for this equation, you want to use R that is 8.31447 joules per mole uh, multiplied by Kelvin. That's on the equation sheet. Just make sure you use this R value because um, this is the correct R value to use. We're going to go into a little bit later about why this R value is so important and why um, we have other units um, for these variables and why that's so important to, you know, make sure we're getting the right answer. Um, but yeah, just, just use this R value. And then T is the temperature in Kelvin. Um, you can see Kelvin here and Kelvin there. Those will cancel each other out. That's why it needs to be in Kelvin. Um, and then M is the molar mass. It's not just the mass, it is the molar mass. So that's like the, the mass that's on the periodic table for each of the elements. Um, and the molar mass needs to be in kilograms per mole 
um, not grams per mole because of the R value. And we'll go into that a little bit later about why it needs to be in kilograms. So hopefully that'll help you remember for the test, you know, it needs to be in kilograms, kilograms, kilograms. Uh, so yeah, we'll go ahead and talk about that in a minute. Um, and so the larger the molar mass, larger M, the smaller the end result is going to be, the smaller the, the answer is going to be, right? Which means the smaller the speed, which means it's gonna be slower. So larger the molecule, the more, more, more molar mass the molecule has, the slower the root mean square speed, right? And that leads us into a fusion and diffusion um, because we're talking about polar particle movement. Um, effusion is gas moving through a tiny hole from high to low concentration. So think of that like you have a balloon, you puncture the balloon, the gas effuses through the hole. Diffusion is just gas spreading out, not through a hole, just is spreading out, you know, like the classic spray perfume in one corner of the room and it diffuses to the rest, you know, that classic example <laughs> that I know we've all heard before. Um, and this relates to root mean squared speed because uh, like we just talked about, the larger the molecule, the slower the speed, right? Yeah. Um, and the slower the speed, the slower it will be to effuse through a hole or diffuse into open space. So that is how root mean square speed and particle molar mass um, connect with effusion and diffusion. Speaking of rates of, uh, speaking of effusion and diffusion, we're going to talk about how to find those rates. Um, and when you're finding the rate, that means you're finding the amount of moles for the amount of time. So the amount of moles that can escape this with this given amount of time, that's what a rate is, okay? Um, and so Graham's law, uh, the rate is proportional to one over the molar mass and the square root of that. And so this is put into an equation of rate of gas A over rate of gas B is equal to the square root of molar mass of gas B over the molar mass of gas A. It's important to note that A here is on the top, or here it's on the bottom, B is here, B is now on the top over here. Um, and this M, like we said, it's mass, it's not molar mass, or no, it's not just the mass, it is the molar mass of the substance. So I have here, it's in kilograms, molar mass is kilograms per mole, it could be grams per mole. Um, if you're using the R value, then you want to have it in kilograms because the R value um, needs kilograms. But if you're just doing this equation, you don't really need it to be, it could be in grams, you know. But it's molar mass, not just the mass of your um, sample. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and use a practice, do a practice problem. Um, I made up these problems, so they're not very good. They're not very really, like accurate, <laughs> but the, they're just giving us some numbers that we can practice with to hopefully get us a little bit more familiar with using these equations so we can be prepared for the final. Okay, so you have a balloon filled with hydrogen and it takes approximately 100 minutes for 2.3 moles of the hydrogen to leak out of the balloon. If the balloon was filled with nitrogen, how long would it take for 2.3 moles of nitrogen to leak from the balloon? Okay, I'm gonna give you a few seconds. Look at this problem. Think about what you would do if you saw this problem on the test, where would you start? Okay, well, if it was me um, doing the, the problem, I would say, okay, cool. So I have minutes and I have moles of hydrogen and I have moles and I need minutes of nitrogen. Okay, well, that sounds a whole lot like a rate because um, rate is moles over time. And so I would say, hmm, I'm gonna use my rate equation. First step, you know, find what you have so you can find what equation you need to use. Um, so we're gonna use this. And once you find out what equation you wanna use, you just, you just plug it all in. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and practice. Oh, if you want, take a picture of this problem because I'm gonna go to a new screen where you won't be able to see the problem. So if you wanna look at it, like work through it with me, or if you just want to try it on your own, then it would probably be best to take a picture right now. Okay. Okay, so we decided that we're going to use our rate equation because we're given moles and we're given time. And that is a rate. So what we are going to do is we're gonna take the oh there we go. The rate of hydrogen over the rate 
of nitrogen. And it doesn't matter which rate is on the hydrogen or nitrogen, which one is on top. Just make sure that when you do the molar masses, um, you're making sure to coordinate, you know, hydrogens with hydrogens and nitrogen with nitrogen. So that would be molar mass nitrogen over the molar mass. Okay, so the question told us that for 2.3 moles to escape of hydrogen, it took 100 minutes. So the rate of hydrogen, since it's uh, mole, that's an O, mole over time, the rate for hydrogen would be 2.3 moles over 100 minutes. And then that is over the rate of nitrogen, but we can think about this um, as the rate of hydrogen multiplied one over one, multiplied by one over the rate of nitrogen. So the reciprocal of the rate of nitrogen. That's what this is telling us right here. So when we're setting up this problem, we are going to put the moles of nitrogen on the bottom because it's the reciprocal. We're timesing it by one over nitrogen uh, because that would give us the rate of hydrogen over the rate of nitrogen, which is what we have over here. So we know that if we, or the question said, yeah, we have 2.3, Three moles of nitrogen. Hopefully that makes sense why then the moles are on bottom here when the moles are on top over here is because um, it's like the reciprocal one over that of nitrogen rather than just rate of hydrogen over one. Um, so we have the moles of nitrogen um, and then multiplied by the minute of the nitrogen, which is what we don't know. We're trying to find that. And this whole thing is equal to the molar mass of nitrogen over the molar mass of hydrogen. Okay, and we know from looking at the periodic table, the molar mass of nitrogen is 14 grams of nitrogen, and hydrogen is about 1.008 grams per, per hydrogen. There we go. Okay, cool. So now we can, um, we'll do a little bit of algebra to be able to isolate this x over here. So we see we have 2.3 moles of hydrogen and 2.3 moles of nitrogen. Those can cancel each other out because they have the same units and they are the same values. And then so we're left with x amount of minutes for nitrogen over 100 minutes of hydrogen equal to 14.01 grams over That's supposed to be an H. That's, ah, my handwriting, guys. <laughs> okay, and to get this X all by itself, we want to get rid of this 100 on the bottom. So we'll multiply this by 100 minutes of hydrogen. And then, you know, you do it to one side, you got to do it to the other. And so then you're left with X amount of minutes for nitrogen equal to 100 minutes hydrogen divided by the square root of 4.8 ish. You know, that's uh, that's an estimate gram. Okay, and at this point, we just plug it into the calculator. So we would take square root of 14.1 divided by um, 1.008. And then we times that by 100 because of this out here in front. And then the answer you should have gotten, if you plugged it in the calculator, you should have gotten that the minutes for nitrogen um, are 372.8 minutes for our nitrogen. Okay, cool. So that's how you'd solve um, one using the rates and the molar masses. Um, so yeah, that's what you would do if you were approached with that kind of problem. Um, let's go back. Okay, we're almost done. We have one more practice problem and then um, one more last slide. Okay, so next practice problem. Gas A has a molecular weight of 92.03 grams per mole. What is the root mean square velocity of this gas at 47 degrees Celsius? Okay, I'm gonna give you a second. Think about 
how you would solve this if you saw this question on the test. Maybe take a picture of it because we're about to go to a different screen. Okay, cool. I'm gonna show you how I would solve it. So I would say, okay, cool. Gas A, molecular weight of nine, uh, there we go, 92.03, this is grams per mole. That is the molecular, the molar mass, molecular weight, you know, molar mass, because anyway. Um, and we're looking for the root mean square velocity. We need root mean squares. That's what we're looking for. Um, of this gas moving at 47 degrees Celsius. Okay, so we've got molar mass. We have degrees. We're looking for root mean square speed. Okay, I would say, hmm, this sounds a whole lot like our three over all over molar mass equation. Okay, so I'd say, hey, let's use this equation. Sweet, super easy. All I gotta do is plug it in. We'd come here, we would say, okay, well, three times by the R value. Oh, that, whoa, that's weird. Times by the R value. And so I wanna take a minute to talk about the R values um, because I know we have a lot on our equation sheet and I just kinda wanna go over why we would use the one that we would use so we can all remember that for the final. Um, so the R value that we want to use in this is 8.3447 and it, the units, we want to use this one because of the units that it's in. That's why we're using this one. Joules per mole multiplied by Kelvin. Okay, and you might be thinking, why would we use this R value? It's in joules. Joules have nothing to do with this. Well, if you look at what a joule is equal to, one joule is equal to um, kilograms meters squared per second squared. That is what a joule is. Okay, cool. So that's nice um, because we're looking for root mean square speed, meaning we have to get some sort of speed units. We would have meters squared over second squared or really, you know, meters per second would be, that's gonna be our end unit that we're um, getting our answer in. Um, and here we have, Kelvin for the R value Kelvin that will cancel out with our Kelvin units here. Um, R, like I said, it's in kilograms because a joule is in kilograms meter squared per second squared. Um, and so our molar mass here, we just need to make sure that that is in kilograms. This will really trip you up. So make sure that your molar mass for this is in kilograms um, because it, kilograms here cancel out with the kilograms in our R value. Um, and then we're left with meters squared over second squared once everything cancels out or just meters per second. So that is why we use this R value. So three multiplied by R. Seven. I'm not gonna write the units just because you can write the units if you want. I know I should, but I'm not going to <laughs> right now. Cause I just, yeah, takes up a lot of space sometimes. Um, and then times by the temperature and we have 47 degrees Celsius, but we need it in Kelvin because our R value is in Kelvin. So to convert something to Kelvin from Celsius, all you do is add 273. So 47 plus 273, that would give you 320 degrees Celsius or degree Kelvin, Oops, my bad, all over the molar mass. And like we said, our R value is in kilograms. Kilograms is one of the units. So our molar mass needs to be in kilograms. So don't just put this in the equation. I did that earlier when I was like working through this when I like wrote the question and I was like trying to figure out the answer and I realized I did it wrong because I put in grams, not kilograms. So you'd have to convert 22.03 grams. Grams or kilograms. 0 0.0923. Grams. And that's what we would put here, 0 0.09203. Okay, and then once you get to that point, you are just plugging things in the calculator. Okay. And 
we just make sure. Yes, okay. And if you plugged it in, um, if you did it correctly, you should have gotten 294.5. Oh no, what are the units? Well, our joules cancel, or our joules are kilograms um, and the kilograms cancel out because those are in kilograms. Um, also moles per Kelvin are moles here. Cancel that out because it's our molar mass. Um, and then your Kelvin and the Kelvin. Um, so we're left with meters sec meters squared over seconds squared or just meters squared, meters squared. So that is the root mean square speed of this gas of this molecular or molar mass going uh, or at this temperature. So that is how you would solve that kind of problem. Okay, we have one last slide. Um, we're going to quickly review pressure. Um, Dr. Mortensen didn't spend a whole lot of time on pressure uh, for this unit. Um, so I'm not gonna talk about it too much, but pressure just pretty much equals force divided by area. It's pressure um, is the force, you know, distributed over a specific area. And then he talked about these things called manometers. Um, and this is an example of an open manometer because if you look right here, the tube is open. So it's open to the pressure of the atmosphere. There's also closed um, manometers, which is what we're gonna talk about right here, a closed system manometer uh, where this would be sealed off. Okay, so a manometer, um, delta H, that's enthalpy, which is energy plus pressure multiplied by volume. So pressure multiplied by the volume, add the energy that will give you your enthalpy. And if your enthalpy is a positive number, then the pressure of the gas would be greater than the pressure of the atmosphere. So this pressure would be greater than this pressure. Um, but if it's negative, enthalpy is negative, the pressure of the gas would be less than the pressure of the atmosphere. And he had some really good pictures on his slides of um, all of these. Um, so I would suggest going and looking at his um, review slides for those because I wasn't able, I couldn't copy his pictures and use them on this presentation. Um, so I would recommend going and looking at the pictures that he has on there because they do a much better job of explaining it than I do. Um, but uh, last thing I wanna say is that if it was a closed system, meaning that this tube was sealed off, it wasn't having access to the atmospheric pressure, um, the delta H is directly, directly measures the gas pressure. Um, and you can see why that would is because you're cutting off the atmospheric pressure if you seal this off. So the enthalpy is just being affected by the pressure of the gas, not by the pressure of the atmosphere. Okay, cool. That is all I have. Um, I hope, like this, this is a review of kinetic molecular theory. I hope it helped you guys somewhat. I know it really helped me. Um, good luck <laughs> studying. You guys can do it. And I hope you have a great week. And I'll see you guys in class. Have a great day.